So with Google Flow, you're not just creating AI scenes, you're creating full cinematic sequences with characters, scenes, audio, and dialogue. If I tell Flow to create a shot of an astronaut floating in space, I click generate and it gives me a cinematic clip. Then I add the next shot and the next, and suddenly it's not just random clips anymore. It's a connected story with consistent characters and scenes. And in this complete step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll show you how to generate your first clip, expand it into new scenes, keep your characters and locations consistent, and finally, bring it all together in Scene Builder into a cinematic sequence that you can export and share. Let me show you how. So first things first, let's actually get into Flow. So to use it, you're gonna need a Google AI subscription. The good news is they do give you a one month free trial so you can jump in, test everything and cancel anytime. I'll also drop the link in the description so that you can follow along easily. Now here's where Google gets a little bit sneaky. If you go straight to flow.google and click where it says requires Google AI subscription, it will only show you the ultra plan. That's $250 a month and that's gonna give you 25,000 credits, which is great if you're running big projects or, you know, pumping out content at scale. But if you're just starting out, it's probably way more than you need. But if you Google Google AI plans, you'll see Flow is also included in the Pro plan, which is what I'm on. And that's only $19.99 a month, and that gives you a thousand credits. And to give you just a rough idea of how far those credits go, VO3 videos cost 20 credits in fast mode or 100 credits in quality mode. So on the pro plan, you'll be able to generate anywhere from 10 to 50 clips a month, which is more than enough for you to practice, experiment, and make some really cool videos, whether that's short films, YouTube content, or product ads. So take advantage of the free trial and let's start creating. Then once you're inside Flow, you'll land on this dashboard. So think of this as your home base, where you start new projects or pick up exactly where you left off. And if you're ever stuck for ideas, then Flow has something called Flow TV, which will give you various example clips and also the prompts used to make them, which is super handy for inspiration. And if you ever want to check how many credits you've got left, then you just click your profile up here and it'll show you your current balance. So to kick things off then, let's hit new project and then let's give our project a name. So I'm making a cinematic shot about an astronaut in space. So I'll call this one, The Last Transmission. Now this is usually the part that throws beginners off at first because Flow actually gives you three different ways to generate clips. First up, we've got text to video. So this is the simplest. You just type your prompt and Flow will generate a clip. And don't worry, Scene Builder, which we're gonna use here in a sec, will keep your characters consistent across all scenes. Then we've got Frames to Video. So this one's for if you want more control. So you simply upload an image, maybe it's of yourself, a product or a mascot, and Flow keeps it consistent throughout the whole story. And last but not least, Ingredients to Video. This is probably the most advanced, where you can upload multiple images, like your character or an object or a certain location, and then Flow will build scenes around them. So for this project, I'm going with frames to video so that I can lock in a consistent main character. At this point, you can either hit generate image, type in your prompt and create the character that you want. Or you can hit upload to upload your own photo. So I want the main character to look like me. So I'm gonna upload my own photo. And then from now on, Flow will use that as the reference, which basically means my character won't suddenly change halfway through the film. All right, so now we have our character set. Let's go ahead and create our first shot. So the first thing we want to do is adjust the settings. So if you look here in the top right of the prompt box, there's a little toggle icon, click that. And here you'll see two options. You've got outputs per prompt. This just means that how many clips Flow makes from the same prompt. So you can choose anywhere between one and four, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and stick with one. And model, you'll see there's options here for VO2 and VO3 each with fast and quality modes. So VO3 is the latest and the best model, and it's the only one that includes dialogue and audio, so I recommend sticking with VO3. Fast is best for quick tests, it's faster and it only costs 20 credits per clip. Quality does take a little bit longer and it costs 100 credits per clip, but the results usually come out much sharper. So for this demo, I'll go with VO3 quality, just so that I can show you flow at its best. So now it's time to enter our prompt and you don't need to overcomplicate this. And I like to think of prompts in two parts, what you see and then what you hear. For the visuals, you've got a shot type. So is it a wide shot, a close up? Is it a tracking shot? 
then the subject, so who or what is in the frame, and then the action, so what is it that's actually happening, what are they doing? A setting, where it's happening, and vibe, so the overall mood or style, like cinematic, animated, futuristic, that kind of thing. Then under audio, you can add any dialogue, background music, and sound effects. So here's the prompt I'll start with for the opening. Cinematic IMAX wide shot of a lone astronaut floating outside a massive futuristic spaceship, Earth visible in the background. His visor is semi-transparent showing his focus face, lit by faint blue HUD lights, flickering inside the helmet. His mouth moves naturally as he speaks, ultra-realistic dramatic lighting, shot like a Hollywood sci-fi thriller. Then under audio we have for dialogue, the astronaut says mission day 72, receiving a signal, background, low atmospheric hum, sound effects, faint radio static, gentle breathing inside the helmet. Oh, and by the way, if you don't want to describe camera moves inside the prompt, then Flow actually has a camera tool built in. So you just click the camera icon here and then pick a move like dolly in or pan left or tilt up. Now let's just hit the little arrow button here to generate. And if you're on quality mode, just give it a couple of seconds to do its thing. And here we are. Let's take a look. Mission day 72 with SAP receiving a signal. And that looks super realistic. It's exactly what we asked for. The astronaut looks like me too, or probably even a better version of me, to be honest. And so, yeah, we can definitely use that. And remember, if your clip doesn't come out right, like the first time, then you can always click reuse prompt to make any changes and to try it again. All right, so now we've got our shot sorted. Now let's start building this out into a proper sequence. So to do that, hover over your clip and then click add to scene and then switch to scene builder. That opens up Scene Builder, which is basically your timeline. So this is where you bring clips together into a story, or you can also generate brand new ones right here using the prompt box. Hit the plus icon and you'll see two main tools. Extend, which adds to the same shot, so it continues the action in the current shot. Or Jump To, so it starts a new shot that flows on from the last one. So let's go ahead and try it. So my astronaut clip looks good, but I want to build on it. So I'm going to click jump to, and then add this prompt with visuals and audio, just like before. Signals inside the rift, going in. And I think that looks really cinematic, which is exactly the style that I'm going for. The only issue I'd say is that sometimes VO3 makes it look like you're in front of the scene instead of actually in the scene. All right, so now let's add a little bit more chaos. So I'll hit jump again and add this prompt. So this time we're gonna throw the astronaut into the wormhole, spiraling violently, like he's caught in some kind of cosmic drain. Mayday! Mayday! Uh, losing control! And yeah, I think that really ramps up the drama. And again, it kept our character consistent, which is great, um, but it still feels like it's the same sequence. So finally, let's jump once more just to land that payoff, the arrival shot in the alien world. I've crossed over and I'm not alone. And that's exactly the kind of closing shot that you'd expect really in a sci-fi shot. It looks super cinematic and kind of cool. And just like that, with a few simple jumps, we've gone from one clip to a short film. So now we have our sequence built, let's just polish it up a little bit. So first, you've got trim. So if you want to start a scene a little bit later or cut at the end, then you can just select the clip you want to trim, hover over the edge of the clip and then drag it in. So that way, you know, you're going to keep the smooth part of the clip and cut the extra frames. Then next, you've got a range. So if you want to change the order of your scenes, you can do that here. You just click on the clip in the timeline and then just drag it to where you want it to be. Also, you can hit the minus icon to remove it and yeah, it really is as simple as that. So now that we've cleaned everything up, let's watch the sequence all the way through. Mission day 72 with SAP receiving a signal. Signals inside the rift, going in. Mayday! Mayday! Uh, losing control! I've crossed over. And I'm not alone. And there you have it, that's our first polished cut built entirely in flow. 
And now, once your video is done, you're ready to export and download. So to do that, go down here, hit download, and then once it's exported, hit download again, and that's your final video ready to go. And congrats, you've just gone from complete beginner to Google Flow Pro in no time. And if you want to see how Flow compares to VO3 on its own, then definitely watch this video next and I will see you there.